Hi friends, greetings from Armidale. Well, the pandemic wears on. Each day we wait for the 11 a.m. announcement from Gladys Berejiklian to work out what it means for the week ahead. Uh, this uncertainty, of course, puts church leaders and their congregations under considerable stress in parishes. It's a season that takes us back to late March last year, when we were all scrambling to work out how to get input from God's word online to encourage God's people while they couldn't gather physically. My experience back then was that it created more work and not less. And so at the request of some of our clergy, I'm recording this sermon to provide some support and to encourage you all to persevere as well. The reality is that over the past 18 months, the COVID-19 pandemic has put many people under tremendous pressure. Fears over health and financial survival, coupled with family and community dislocation due to travelling and gathering restrictions, have led to grief and heartache for many. Here in Australia, while we've been largely spared the direct suffering associated with the coronavirus, the economic toll and the mental health impact have been huge. Our businesses have folded, many have lost their jobs, and now with the further widespread and prolonged lockdowns, anxiety and depression are on the rise. Well, I wonder how you've coped in this season of uncertainty. As the pressures come on, where have you found your comfort, rest and security? Over the years, I've found Psalm 62, a passage of great comfort during times of hardship and grief. Written by King David, this psalm was composed in a season of intense pressure. And so it comes to us as the fruit of adversity. In this psalm, we find David working on his head talk to keep a right perspective, then encouraging others to do likewise. He begins by stating what he knows to be true. Look with me at verses 1 and 2. My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. The rest David speaks of flows from a heart attitude that waits silently for God. It's an expression of total trust in him, having been through life-threatening situations time after time in his early years, David knew that his salvation came from God. Whether it was being delivered from wild animals while protecting sheep, or from Goliath when fighting the Philistines, or even from the hand of King Saul over many years as he sought to kill him, God had always proved to be the rock David could stand on, the salvation he could count on, and the fortress he could take refuge in. Now, I don't know about you, but I find David's testimony in these words very comforting. The thought of finding rest for my mind when it's noisy with concern, of being sure where I stand with God when everything's uncertain, of being secure and protected by him through the storm at hand, all of that is reassuring. And I find reading these words comforting and praying them helpful. Lord, help me to find rest in you alone. Thank you that my salvation comes from you. Thank you that you alone are my rock, my salvation and my fortress. Please help me to stand firm and not be shaken. Friends, these are verses worth learning by heart and bringing to mind often if we're God's people. Well, David himself found recounting these truths helpful, especially when the going got tough. In the second half of his reign as king, David faced a very difficult season of opposition from enemies. Look at how he reflects on this in verses 3 and 4. How long will you assault a man? Would all of you throw him down, this leaning wall, this toppling fence? They fully intend to topple him from his lofty place. They take delight in lies. With their mouth they bless, but in their hearts they curse. The description of himself as a, a leaning wall suggests a time later in King David's reign. The lies and betrayal could be well referring to the uprising of his son Absalom, who sought to take his father, take, to kill his father and take his throne. These events in 2 Samuel 15 to 19 saw David flee for a time, once again pursued for his life. And it's not hard to see how such a time could give rise to Psalm 62. 
Now, while you may not have experienced the same life-threatening challenges as David, you may still be able to relate to the sense of feeling under attack due to adverse circumstance. Perhaps you've endured relational conflict that's left you wounded and wondering how you can go on. Perhaps you've faced serious health issues that have left you uncertain about whether you would even survive. Or maybe you've lost your job and discovered the stress of not knowing how you would pay your bills and feed your family. I know of one Christian woman who was a top-notch pilot with Qantas. Uh, she was the first pilot, in fact, to fly a jet non-stop from Sydney to New York. Then the pandemic hit. Overseas flights stopped. Just like that, she lost her job. Again, it can happen so easily, can't it? Indeed, things like this have happened regularly to people all over our country and in our church families over the past year as well. Our lives, in one sense, are no different to David's in terms of the challenges life throws at us. The longer we live, the more we will face. The question is, how we will we respond to these challenges? King David, when faced with his current situation, returned to God the rock. And he does it by talking to himself in the light of what he already knows to be true. Look with me at verses 6 and 7. He goes on, Find rest my soul in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honour depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. I wonder, do you ever talk to yourself when you're under pressure? I do sometimes. Come on, Rodney, have a go. Careful, Rod. Take it steady. Stick at it, Rod. Don't give up. Do you ever do that? Well, maybe you do, maybe you don't. But I'm actually encouraged that King David talked to himself when he was under pressure. He says, find rest, my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock, my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. Very similar, of course, to the statement he'd made in verses 1 and 2. But now David is instructing himself in how to respond to hardship. This is David working on his head talk before cognitive behaviour therapy was a thing. The repetition of the phrases, God alone, he alone, serve to underline that God is the only rock that can be relied on, the only one who can save, the only one in whom refuge can be found. And to further emphasise this, he now adds another phrase, my salvation and my honour depend on God. Okay? No one else, just God. He is my mighty rock and refuge. Well, what a steady place to stand. This is head talk worth sharing, don't you think? This is a mindset that has the potential to help every one of us as God's people. And so comes the exhortation to all who would read this psalm in verse 8. David says, Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. This is advice based on truth. David knew from experience that God could be trusted when the going gets tough. And for that reason, pouring out your heart to him made perfect sense. Now, I love that phrase, pour out your heart to him. He's saying, tell God how you feel. Ask him for what you need. Don't hold back. And certainly as you read through the Psalms, David never did hold back. He let it all hang out when he talked to God. He let him know exactly how he felt. So just a few examples. Psalm 63, he says, O God, you are my God. I earnestly seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. You hear the passion in that? Or Psalm 69, Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in the miry depths where there is no foothold. I have come into deep waters. The floods engulf me. It's a raw cry for help, isn't it? And the most well-known one from Psalm 22, which Jesus echoed on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my words of groaning? See, these are all examples of David pouring out his heart to God. 
They show us what it means to be honest with God. And it reminds us that the good news is we can. In the light of who God is and what he's done for us, we can trust him and pour out our hearts to him. He is our refuge. And so it makes sense to look to him as our rock rather than the security of other people or other things. Look at how David says this now in verses 9 and 10. He goes on, Low-born men are but a breath. The high-born are but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they're nothing. Together they're only a breath. Do not trust in extortion or take pride in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. See, when the pressure's on, don't look to people for rescue. Whether high or low-born, they're but a breath. They're a vapour here, then gone. Don't look to worldly wealth for rescue either. Riches have no power to save. Too often we look to worldly status for our sense of worth. But you know, our value isn't measured by where we are on the human pecking order. Our value doesn't lie in how high up we get or in how many people answer to us. No, it lies in the fact that God made us and knows us and loves us and has acted to rescue us to be his own. Too often we look to worldly wealth for our security. But the reality is no fortune is secure in this life. Share portfolios can plummet. Houses can fall down. Money can't buy health no matter how much of it you have. No, true security is found only when we trust in God and find forgiveness and new life in him. See, status and wealth mean nothing in the end. The one with the most toys at the end of their life doesn't win. They die like everyone else. But the one who trusts in God alone, regardless of whether they're rich or poor, well-known or unknown, will have life beyond this life in heaven forever. That is true security. Friends, at the end of the day, there is just one place we can go to find rest, salvation and refuge in the storm. And David tells us why in his conclusion. He says, verse 11 and 12, One thing God has spoken, two things have I heard, that you, O God, are strong and that you, O Lord, are loving. Surely you will reward each person according to what they have done. This is why it makes sense to trust in God alone when the pressure's on. He is strong, which means he can help us, and he's loving, which means he will help us. And the final verse reminds us that he's also a just God, vindicating all who trust and obey him. David knew from experience that God was strong and plenty powerful enough to answer his prayers. He also knew that God's steadfast covenant love towards him meant that he would hear and answer those prayers. Now, at this side of the cross, we see God's strength more fully, of course, in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. Now, David was a king who knew God's steadfast love. Jesus was a king who embodied God's steadfast love. The disciples saw God's power and love in Jesus firsthand. They were there when he calmed the storm at sea with a word. They watched him show compassion as he healed the sick, cast out evil spirits and even raise the dead. And so when Jesus asked them, who do you say I am? And Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. He got it right. Jesus was the long awaited king who would rescue God's people. He was God the son. This truth about Jesus was the rock on which the church would stand. Jesus himself would build it and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. Now, I don't know about you, but I find that profoundly encouraging. Jesus Christ is our rock and he will build his church. The COVID-19 season has brought many challenges to the church around the world. Over the past few weeks, I've been speaking to ministers in Sydney after seven weeks lockdown and others in Melbourne who've been in lockdown for more time than not over the past 18 months. Here in rural New South Wales, we've had it pretty good, relatively speaking, when it comes to being able to physically gather. But with this new Delta variant in this second wave, that may well now change. 
periodic lockdowns may become the pattern for us going forward as well. Friends, the reality is that these challenges for churches are likely to continue. Yet Christ is still building his church. This difficult time has highlighted the importance of finding creative ways to feed people from God's word. It's made us realise the vital importance of keeping in touch with and caring for one another. And I think it's made us hungry for Christian fellowship, that we might not take for granted the privilege that it is to gather as his people. So this has been a refining time for the church. And I believe that God will bring us through this season even stronger, not through anything we've done, but because Christ will build his church. He alone is our rock and our salvation. In Jesus, we know God's steadfast covenant love more fully than David did. He came according to God's good purpose and plan to fulfill the Old Testament scriptures. He lived the perfect life. He died a sacrificial death to take the punishment our sins deserve that we might be forgiven. On the third day, he rose again that we might have the living hope of eternal life. Friends, can you see? This means we can find rest in Jesus. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He was speaking of rest from trying to earn our way into faith with God. Rest that comes through forgiveness, freely given. So when we come clean about our failures and ask Jesus for forgiveness, the burden of our sin falls away and we discover the hope of life in friendship with God, both now but also forever. So we can find rest in Jesus. Our hope comes from him. He alone is our rock and our salvation. He is our fortress. When we trust in him, we will not be shaken. Well, as I said, I don't know about you, but I find it of great comfort, especially when days are dark and life seems overwhelming. Uh, when I lived in Mungandai years ago, I went through a particularly dark time of depression. But the truth I found helpful was that Christ was the solid rock on which I could stand. There was a song that summed up this truth for me at that time. It was called My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Uh, about that time, my sister-in-law, Nikki Chiswell, wrote a beautiful tune to go with the timeless words. And I used to play her CD often, and that song in particular. You might know the words, but there's one verse that particularly struck a chord for me. It says this, When weary in this earthly race, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds and will not fail. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. And I remember lying on the lounge in Mungandai in tears of despair at times, but listening to those words over and over again and just clinging to their truth. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. He alone is my rock, my salvation, my fortress. I will not be shaken. The good news is that I did find rest in Jesus at that time by clinging to those truths that the song and Psalm 62 bring us. I also sought professional help through counselling, and that too helped bring me through that dark period of depression. But you know, in that tough season, I learnt what it meant to trust God at all times. I learnt what it meant to pour out my heart to him. And you know, I'm still learning what it means to trust God at all times and to pour out my heart to him. Sometimes I do that praying silently, sometimes praying aloud, sometimes still in tears when things are hard. Often I'll write thoughts down in my journal, then I'll turn them into prayer. You know, this year I know many people have struggled with mental health. Indeed, some of the strongest Christians I know are doing it tough. And it's not that God has abandoned them. It's not that their faith is somehow substandard. It's just that life in a fallen world is tough, and sometimes very tough. Well, perhaps you've struggled as well. Can I say, if you want to talk through that with someone, please let me or your minister know. Talk to me, talk to them, or talk to someone else you trust today. 
If you don't yet know the comfort and hope that comes through trusting in Jesus, but you'd like to, you could let us know that as well so we can help you to discover the difference that Jesus can make. There is hope and comfort to be found in Jesus, as we've seen today. And there is help and support to be found through God's people, if you let someone know. May God strengthen us by his spirit to cling to Jesus the rock and find our rest, salvation and refuge in him. Amen.